Good morning, sir, and uh, thank you so much for having you here, sir. So my first question to you, sir. You know, Taprom is a very famous temple in Cambodia, and uh, it attracts so many tourists. And of course, the image is very well known to the world. Uh, the, the face of the the god and also the tree that that uh, grows uh, on top of it, sir. So uh, for the restoration done by the Indian team, sir, for the past many years, sir. Uh, can sir uh, tell us like what is the remarkable activities that that you would like to share to the public sir uh, first of all thank you very much for inviting us over it's been a delight india has been closely associated with the royal government of cambodia towards the conservation of its monuments right now as you very rightly mentioned that we're working towards the conservation of one of the most iconic temples the Takrum uh, temple also known as the three temples now this was something, uh, the concept I think was conceived way back in 2002 if my memory doesn't fail me and that we have been working here since 2004. So it makes it nearly two decades oh, of yes. ASI's, that is Archaeological Survey of India's involvement in the conservation of the temple. This has been a very interesting journey for us from the point of view that from where the temple was to where it is now. It is not only about the conservation of the structures within the temple, it is also about a very unique challenge that the Archaeological Survey of India faced. Now that unique challenge was in terms of uh, the, the nature, the way it had consumed the monument for centuries. Yes, and therefore the, the challenge was to maintain that very fine balance between the built and the natural environment. Now this, was, this is easier said than done, but, but you may realize that the trees that are growing on it, there's a particular variety whose roots are penetrating deeper into the structure and they oh. tend to dislodge the stones. So we had to adopt a very multidisciplinary approach. We had our Forest Research Institute who, who gave us the understanding of the tree, of the load of the tree, of the roots, the way they were penetrating and how, and how it was impacting the structures. We had uh, with us the, uh, the Indian Institute of Technology Madras to give us a structural solution based on these studies that we were able to undertake the conservation works. So we have already completed two phases of work which started from 2004 up to 2015 and from 2015 up till 2025 which is two years from now we would be completing the third phase. The most challenging work in these if I may say so A was the third gallery enclosure which we conserved which was nothing but a pile of stones which were just lying so we had to remove the stones layer by layer grid by gear, grid and it was almost like solving a jigsaw puzzle yes. in order to get back the stones in exactly the same location that they were and ASI takes pride in informing that in doing so we use the same material about 92 percent of the material is which was original only seven percent material was added only in order to ensure the structural stability and to ensure that there is no water ingress in it. Okay. So that was the kind of work that we did and then later uh, our most challenging work was which started 2011 was the conservation of Hall of Dancers. Yes. So that work took us nearly about 10 years and I'm delighted to inform that last November our Honorable Pre Vice President of India along with our Honorable Minister of External Affairs and uh, Honorable Minister of Culture, Royal Government of Cambodia, they inaugurated the conservation work when it was completed. So it is now handed back to the people and the government of the Royal Government of Cambodia. So that's the work completed and we are working on other locations also at the moment. If you, if you would notice that we are working on the Eastern Gateway, that work is continuing. And I think India would again be committed to continue and maintain this relationship with the Royal Government of Cambodia through the conservation of its iconic monuments. And therefore, from 2025, we perhaps would be proposing more works uh, at different locations inside the uh, Taprum Temple complex. And that, of course, is in consultation with the Upstra National Authority, the ICC, uh, who is monitoring uh, this entire uh, endeavor. So we look forward to working on, there is a, uh, a pillared pavilion next to the Hall of Dancers, the Northern Gateway, and there are at two locations shrines inside the Taprum Temple Complex that we would be working on, hopefully 2025 onwards. And sir, uh, one more thing, uh, I mean, temples are quite a tricky architecture to work on. So do you think like in the future, um, I mean, the conservation work just continue endlessly, or is there like, there should be a stop somewhere, you know, because it, it's getting older and older all the time, so 
first of so all, the situation uh, will go on forever. Also, see, uh, first of all, now I speak from the Indian standpoint. Yes, sir. Uh, conservation of temples is not a challenge for us yes. because back home we have similar architecture. Uh, Archaeological Survey of India has 3,697 monuments of which there is a very large number of uh, the temples or other religious structures. So therefore their conservation, their maintenance is something which we do it on daily or on a, on a yearly basis. Here and also I think the work that we are undertaking is something that is that is being undertaken after a very sort of a, uh, a very comprehensive study, the documentation, a lot of issues where certain spe specific technical studies are required are being undertaken by us. You are very right in, right in pointing out that conservation does not and can't go you know forever. However, having said that, uh, the maintenance of monuments which is also indirect form of conservation or if there are any structural challenges that may emanate from time to time uh, is something that we need to address. Uh, address. So I think in case of TAPROM first of all in consultation and collaboration with the Upstar National Authority and the ICC we have to first of all decide at how much to conserve what all to conserve, how much to conserve, now that call needs to be collectively taken. Now that depends on a whole, whole range of factors. Once that is done, once we have done the conservation of these monuments, then it is a question of subsequently maintaining that. So there is a, there is a finiteness to this entire process. Yes, yes. Traditionally wise and culturally wise, Cambodia and uh, India share a lot of uh, tradition and, and, and culture. Yes, sir. So, so when uh, the both team from two countries work together, do they learn something from each other a lot or not? Of course we do. Uh, you're very rightly, uh, you've pointed out that our cultural interaction with each other, with, with each other goes, uh, goes back uh, more than a millennia. Uh, and therefore there is a, there is a intention of A, the sharing of knowledge. B, I would also like to point out here that, that the government of India has also launched uh, a very ambitious project called Project Mossum. Now this project Mossam essentially through the sea route our connectivity with each other that happened uh, you know uh, in 5th, 6th, 7th centuries where the religion traveled, where the cultural practices traveled through trade and through other uh, means is uh, the idea is to celebrate that heritage, to learn from each other. So therefore uh, it is as much as we are learning is as much as we are trying to impart our understanding of conservation and technical know-how to the to the officials and the technical staff of the Royal Government of Cambodia. So it's it's a, it's a two-way process. It's never a, it's never a one-way process.